What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another Pitching Ninja's Filthiest Pitches of the Day. Remember, before we get to those pitches, hit that subscribe button. Join Ninja Nation. Be a part of the biggest and best daily baseball show on YouTube. And now, without further ado, here are my filthiest pitches of the day. I'm going to start out with Carlos Carrasco who had 5 Ks in 3 innings, giving up 2 runs. He had this nasty curveball, changeup, and slider. He faced Quinn Priester, who had 3 Ks in 5 innings, but gave up 6 runs. He had this sinker and slider. J.P. Sears had 6 Ks in 5 innings, giving up 3 runs. He had this elevated fastball, as well as these nasty sliders. And it's looked pretty solid this season. He battled Miles Michaelis, who had 4 Ks in 6 and a third innings, giving up 4 runs, and had this slider and pretty curveball. Max Fried had 2 Ks in 6 innings, giving up 2 runs, and had this vicious slider. A good outing from Freed despite the lack of Ks. He faced Clark Schmidt, who had these cutters and knuckle curves, and had three Ks in two and a third innings, but gave up eight runs. Heck, I didn't even think he was all that bad, but the Braves' offense is just unstoppable. Framber Valdez had four Ks in seven and two-thirds innings, giving up three earned runs. He pitched really well up into the eighth inning, where he gave up back-to-back -back home runs. He had this mean sinker to arise. One of the toughest guys to K in baseball, and... Look at that swing. He also worked in some filthy change-ups and curveballs. He battled Braxton Garrett, who only had 1K in five scoreless innings, and that K came on this slider. Despite not picking up a ton of strikeouts, it was another very good outing for Garrett. Logan Gilbert had five strikeouts in four and a third innings, giving up four runs. He had a slow start in this game, giving up three runs in the first inning, but settled down and got Ks on his fastball, as well as his nasty splitter. He was outdueled by Brady Singer, who was fantastic, with eight strikeouts in seven and a third innings, giving up only two runs. Singer took a no-hitter into the seventh inning, and his slider was a huge pitch for him this game. He got ten whiffs on his slider. His slider doesn't have much sweep to it, but gets a good bit of drop. And when he has it dialed in like he did yesterday, it's a tough day for hitters. He also threw some wicked two-seamers. Ever since late July, he's been pitching a lot more like Brady Singer. And this was another extremely good outing. Tyler Glasnow had 7 Ks in 6 innings, giving up 1 run. Glasnow said his back didn't hurt and his stuff looked sharp, and it certainly looked sharp to me. His fastball was up to 99 miles an hour and had these vicious sliders and, of course, his hammer curveballs. And when you're facing a healthy Tyler Glasnow, it is going to be a long day for you as a hitter. He has the stuff to just annihilate you. He faced Ryan Walker, the opener, who picked up 4 Ks in 2 innings, giving up no runs. And I'll tell you, Walker's stuff is low-key nasty. Look at these sliders. And here's a home plate view that shows you what it's like to hit against Ryan Walker's slider. That is filthy. Chris Flexen had 6 Ks in 6 innings, giving up 4 runs and had this change-up and cutter. And he faced Merrill Kelly, who had 11 strikeouts in 6 innings, giving up 2 runs. Kelly was sharp, picking up Ks on his fastballs, including this elevated fastball, as well as his sliders, changeup, and this absolutely perfect backdoor cutter. You just can't paint a pitch better than that. Absolutely gorgeous. Max Scherzer was outstanding yesterday with 11 strikeouts and 7 innings, giving up only one hit and one walk. He picked up another double-digit strikeout game, and he has by far the most double-digit strikeout games in baseball since the year 2000. He has 112 of them, and second is Randy Johnson with 87. Scherzer also ranks 5th in games of 10 strikeouts or more with no runs allowed, behind Nolan Ryan, Randy Johnson, Roger Clemens, and Pedro Martinez. That's how historic Max Scherzer's career has been so far. Mad Max dominated with his fastballs, as well as his changeup, and you can see that changeup here, how the velo difference gets the hitter. And of course, he also had his wicked sliders. He K'd the side with a combination of a fastball, cutter, and an auto K, it's kind of rare you see a pitcher pissed off for getting a strikeout, but Max wanted to do it by himself and not due to a pitch clock violation. He also had this nasty back foot cutter, as well as these filthy curveballs. And here's an overlay of Scherzer's fastball and curveball, and you can see how those pitches work together. Although I do really hate the Rangers camera angle, you could never see the depth of the pitches. Because you might remember from other of my videos how much Scherzer's curveball drops. Another outstanding outing by Mad Max. Scherzer outdueled Patrick Sandoval, who had 6 Ks in 2 and 2 thirds innings, but gave up 4 earned runs. 
Sandoval got K's on his slider, two-seamer, and changeup. Yu Darvish had six K's in seven innings, giving up four runs. The big story this game is Yu Darvish became the all-time strikeout leader among Japanese-born players in Major League Baseball history, and he did it with the former record holder Hideo Nomo watching. A huge accomplishment for Hugh Darvish, and we're going to give him a round of applause. Darvish picked up K's on his sweeper, his cutter, his knuckle curve, and this absolutely perfect 95-mile-an-hour backdoor two-seamer. Look at that paint. And he faced yesterday's filthiest starting pitcher of the day, Grayson Rodriguez. G-Rod may not have had the biggest strikeout total of the day, but oh my god, his stuff is disgusting. He picked up six Ks in seven innings, giving up only one run on three hits. But that doesn't even start to tell the story of G-Rod's stuff. His fastball was electric, topping out at 101 miles an hour. And I thought his sliders were disgusting this game. Look at these things. And he also had some disappearing changeups, which before I thought was maybe his best pitch. But to me, this game was more about his slider and fastball. Here's an overlay of a 98-mile-an-hour fastball and an 85-mile-an-hour slider, and you can see how tough that combination is. But the highlight of the night was Grayson Rodriguez absolutely dismantling Tatis. Look at this three-pitch strikeout. A 100-mile-an-hour fastball followed up by two ridiculous sliders. Fernando Tatis didn't know what hit him. And check out this incredible overlay of Grayson Rodriguez's 100-mile-an-hour fastball and 84-mile-an-hour slider to Tatis. What are you going to do with this? Those pitches tunnel perfectly, and basically you're just left to guess. And even if you guess right, I'm not sure it's going to help you. I mentioned in a Baltimore radio interview how much I like Grayson Rodriguez's stuff. And that's how I judge a young pitcher. Not by the results, because sometimes command can be tough, but... Grayson Rodriguez's stuff is as good as anybody's. And this game flat out proves it. Here's a look at his pitch mix for the game, and you can see his fastball averaged 98.9 miles an hour. When he puts his stuff together like this, he's undoubtedly the best starting pitcher the Orioles have. And Grayson Rodriguez takes his rightfully earned place as one of the filthiest young pitchers in baseball. Now on to my filthiest relievers. Miguel Castro had this slider and fastball. Pierce Johnson had this dirty curveball. Matt Cook had these nasty cutters. Justin Topa had this filthy two-seamer. Adam Adovino had this change-up and front door two-seamer. Jojo Romero had this vicious back foot slider. And my filthiest reliever from yesterday was Justin Lawrence for these frisbee sweepers. Disgusting. That's right. Welcome back to Dong of the Week, where a good piece of hitting is swinging out of your shoes and hitting it for you. We're going to kick it off by watching Aaron Judge do what Aaron Judge does best, which is hitting the dick skin off of baseballs. No amphibious god could help the Jesus lizard with this middle middle meat. Next, we have a never-before-seen on-deck dong by Corbin Carroll. Kids, it's a good habit to practice timing while you're on deck, but it's an even better habit to hit the dong yourself from the on-deck circle, as Carroll seemingly did here. The longest dong of the week goes to Ryan Mountcastle for abusing this ball, 472. Ooh. That is hammered. We also have an all-time fan snatch here from this legend of the game. Mustache here in the back does not give a flying f just wants to drop off his tube steak. But the dong of the week comes from later in this game, in maybe the at-bat of the year, where Kyle Tucker hits a game-winning ninth inning grand salami sandwich, down three runs off the hardest man in the league to face this season, in a battle of two of the best AL teams. This was a nine pitch at bat where Tucker started down 0-2. And he wins the game here, giving the Mountain four of his only ten earned runs of the entire season. And that's your dog. And now, my Pitching Ninja moment of zen. It's John Smoltz with this awesome dad joke. Do you know what that is? It's a person walking. Oh, it's called footage. <laughs> I'd love to see more dad jokes from John and less complaining about today's game. But maybe that's just me. What is up, everybody? My picks of the day today are three-leg parlay. I'm going to start out with Bailey over for six Ks or more. 
then take Tukey Toussaint for 6Ks or more, and top it off with Bobby Miller for 6Ks or more. What would your picks of the day be?